Hi, my name is Rachel Lundgren, and I will be talking about some of the questions and some of the misconceptions that programs have had as they have learned about the APA group specialty. So the number one misconception has been related to who the specialty designation is for. So an academic program, as an example, may think that their students are the ones to get the designation. But in reality, the designation is for the program itself. So if a student is interested in the APA group specialty, then they would be expected to have the experiences related to group that a program offers, but the designation itself is actually given to the program. So that was a pretty common misconception that we wanted to make sure to clarify. And then another question we've gotten, um, as an example, an academic program may wonder how many students must meet the requirements for the program to qualify for the specialty. And it really doesn't matter how many students are meeting the requirements from year to year. So what matters is the fact that a program gives students the opportunity to have the experiences related to group if they want it. So there's probably going to be some years that more students are interested, other years that less students are interested, much like if there's a neuroemphasis, it's just going to fluctuate from year to year. So again, what matters is the fact that students have the opportunities to have group-related experiences if they want it. So there is no number of students that's going to be required. And then as an example, there may be an academic program that has a group therapy course, and that course may meet a lot of the didactic requirements. And there may be some students that don't take it, and that's totally fine. Again, just the idea that students have that opportunity. And then this came from an academic program. So in this specific example, a student could only meet certain didactic requirements if they had certain clinical externship experiences. And would that program still qualify? And the answer is yes, that would totally be fine. So not every externship would need to be uh, group related and not every externship would have to meet those didactic requirements. What matters is the fact that students have the opportunity again to have those experiences if they want it. So that would be totally fine. And then this came from an internship. What if your internship site assumes that the intern's academic program met a lot of the didactic points that it is expected for interns to have exposure to? And that's probably going to happen. In a lot of instances, there's probably going to be didactic topics that you expect the academic program to cover. But what matters is what you are going to do if the intern did not have exposure through their academic program. So there can be conferences, there can be webinars, there can be readings. There are different ways in which you can help make up for that and make sure that the intern has exposure to group topics. And then this is one final question just related to accreditation. So how will my um, accreditation status be impacted by the APA group specialty? and it will not be impacted. So if you qualify for the group specialty designation, nothing will change with your accreditation. What will change is just that you can advertise that you meet the requirements for the emphasis, but the actual accreditation itself will not change. And as more programs start looking into the group specialty, I'm sure more questions will pop up and there will be more misconceptions and hopefully we'll be able to start building an FAQ and be able to answer those questions. But I hope that this helps clarify any um, initial misunderstandings that you may have had and clarify any potential misconceptions and questions. And I wish you the best of luck as you consider the APA group specialty.